Alright legends, welcome along the Hail Mary Hotline, I'm your host Rodney Stewart and we're continuing on with the, the Halloween movies. At, at this point, I'm a few days behind on my upload schedule, this should be out, sorry about that, this should be out on a Friday, it's currently Sunday, so yes, you're getting it <laughs> a couple of days late, so please bear with me, juggling a lot of balls at the moment, but we're getting into this final trilogy that just finished off a few years back that's entitled Halloween <laughs> interestingly and originally enough uh, from 2018 uh, directed by David Gordon Green uh, it was co-written by Green Jeff Fradley and uh, Fradley that's a weird name and uh, Danny McBride and uh, that's a direct sequel to the 1978 film with the same name so uh Kind of strange, okay. Uh, here's this movie, Halloween, and here's this sequel to that movie that was called Halloween, and this one was called Halloween as well. So, uh, <laughs> but instead, you know, there's a lot of a lot of years difference in between these two, uh, 2018. So, basically, we have uh, the similar sort of situation that you expect, and we've got Jamie Lee Curtis back again. And uh, it's horror getting prepared to face Michael again. So everything that happened after that original film uh, doesn't count. So any other things that she showed up on after that there doesn't count where this one's concerned. Uh, he was arrested, taken into uh, under the police. I was trying to find a custody. I mean, he was taken under custody after the first movie. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so he's been in... He's been rotten in the Laughing Academy since the... <laughs> whatever happened in the, the first movie. Uh, forgive me, I am shattered, as I say. Uh, juggling a lot of balls here. But... Uh, the plot of the movie is simple and straightforward enough. Uh, it's October 29th, 2018. Michael Myers is in Smith's Grove Psychiatric Hospital for 40 years following the killing spree in Haddonsfield, as I just said. Uh, but he's been prepared for transfer to a maximum security prison, which is a, you would think, catch yourself on here, boys. You get this man. Locked up, he's behind bars, keep him there. You're just asking for trouble, taking him out. Um, so, true crime, true crime podcasters turn up, hoping to get an interview of him. And you couldn't watch podcasters. Troublemakers, they're not all them. <laughs> but, uh, yes, Aaron Corney and Diana Haynes visit the hospital where Aaron... Uh, displays Michael's mask to him. That's got no effect on him, or so we believe at this point. He's just he's been there for forty years, never speaks. He's just existing. He's just taken over mentally, you know. Uh, back in Haddonfield, Laurie Strode uh, still lives in fear of him. Uh, she's drinking very very heavily, and uh, rarely leaves her fortified house. So she's almost like one of these survivalists in this version of Halloween. And it's all because of what happened there. And, you know, this could happen again. I'm going to be ready for it. So she's out there. The whole thing fenced off. Guns everywhere. Guns hidden in the house. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, she rarely leaves the house. Uh, she's got a strained relationship with her daughter, Karen, whom the state took away from her when Karen was 12 years old. Alison, Laurie's grandmother, tries to maintain a relationship with Laurie, uh, but the night of October 30th, as Michael has been transferred, uh, the bus crashes, of course it does, and Michael escapes after murdering two people and stealing their truck. Now, there's other people in this bus that also got away, and that plays into the the next film, I believe. So, uh, yeah, on the morning of October 31st, uh, Michael sees 
Aaron and Dana visiting his sister Judith's grave, these two podcasters once again. Um, so uh, Michael kills them, of course, and as well as a mechanic for his coveralls. So he kills them, gets his mask back, and he gets the standard overalls that make up the, the look of the the psychopath and you know just he's got that Captain Kirk mask back on again and <laughs> I still find it strange that Shatner let that go you know it's like some guy if memory serves found this mask that was used on the set of Star Trek back in the day um, apparently Shatner I'm just trying to go by memory here but apparently he was that lazy if they were going to put any prosthetics on him he wouldn't sit in the chair long enough to get it, so they created this mask so that they could work on whatever makeup they're going to use in him on the mask and then it transferred over to his face. Uh, so this was found in some storeroom back in whenever the first Halloween was made and spray painted it white and took it as the, the standard mask. So it was really, I find it weird that Shatner let that run. It's like my face is the face of a like a half a killer in the movies so uh <coughs> i believe that's the way it worked out so uh yes he gets his gear back uh that night allison finds that her boyfriend's cheating on her at a party and leaves with his friend oscar so the pair of them head off allison's best friend and her boyfriend are both killed by michael uh, i'm very swiftly rolling over this movie here because um it was all right. <laughs> it was all right. It was a, it was a good attempt. This movie, I have to say now, but uh, for me, this tr- last trilogy of movies, I think the high point for me was actually Halloween Kills. But we'll get to that. I'm sort of skipping ahead of myself here. But uh, Deputy Frank Hawkins, who arrested Michael in '78, and Laurie over here, the incident on the radio. And they go over to the house. Um, forgive me, I thought I just jumped over something in my notes there. Laurie sees Michael for the first time in 40 years at this point and shoots him before he flees. Uh, the police take Laurie, Karen, and her husband Ray to Laurie's home for protection. So, you know, that's fortified. She's ready for this. Um, when the bus crashed, she was actually. At the beginning, well, not at the beginning of the movie, but whenever the transfer was happening, Laurie was prepared at that point to take a shot at Michael. And, uh, yes, so she's just, she's up for it at this point. Um, Dr. Sartin, Michael's psychiatrist and former student of Dr. Samuel Loomis, uh, persuades Sheriff Barker to help him hunt for Michael. Michael kills Oscar, but Hawkins and Sarton rescue Allison. I am thinking I must saw him out somewhere along the line here. This isn't making sense for you guys. I am so sorry. But uh, yes, I was just sort of jotting notes as I was watching the film. Um, yeah, this doctor, uh, Sartain, he's became a obsessed with Michael attacks and leaves Hawkins for dead so you know he this poor policeman is just like you know well I'll help you get this head kiss but the, the doctor himself turns on him attacks him leaves him for dead it's revealed that he orchestrated Michael's escape to study him in the wild uh, Dr. Sarton heads towards Laurie's home with an unconscious Michael and Alison, the granddaughter of Laurie, locked in the back seat together. So Michael wakes up and uh, kills Sartain, where Sartain, while Alison flees. Now that's really cutting it down a bit. Uh, the thing was, never you, he was coming for the kill with the doctor. The doctor, he was like, we speak, speak, say something. Like, in all the years he was the was looking after Michael, he. Couldn't get a word out of him, and up until his last breath, like he's hoping, like you know, we've got him. 
I've got them out, I've released them, I've pretty much activated them at this point. I have to get something back out of them. I just want to hear his voice more or less. But it gets it gets ended very swiftly. We don't lose any tears over that. Uh, Michael then kills the two police officers stationed outside Laurie's home and uh, strangles Ray to death. He goes out to check where's these guys at. Gets taken out by Michael. So uh, it's getting very personal at this point. Uh, Laurie's daughter was very dismissive of everything that Laurie was saying about Michael Myers and the possibility that they could come back. You know, you need to forget everything. Love your life. You're just, you destroyed my childhood with this nonsense. Now you're trying to drag my daughter and it, you know, the second generation on and you're still messing about with this stuff. But it gets personal for her in this movie whenever her husband gets strangled by Michael outside the house. So that leads up to the big showdown with Laurie. Um, you know, there's the cat and mouse game, of course, getting chased back and forth between Laurie and the daughter and the granddaughter. Um, he stabs Laurie and pushes her over a balcony. Uh, when he goes to check her body, he finds it missing, which is similar to their first encounter back in the original movie. Karen, Laurie's daughter then, uh, shoots him in the jaw before Laurie traps him inside the safe room, which is, she had this tasty little setup in the kitchen where the, the, she would press a button and the, the counter would move back and there would be these steps down into the, the basement. And uh, yes, it's like a panic room, but the real reason for it was to actually trap Michael on it, so they manage to get him into this room. Uh, Karen's in there uh, with Alison helping her. Uh, the trio then set the house on fire, and Laurie says goodbye to Michael before she passes out. Uh, the family take her to the hospital, and a final shot of the burning basement is shown on screen with Michael nowhere to be in sight. And uh, I didn't realise this. Uh, there's a post credit scene that uh, you can hear Michael's breathing indicating that he's survived. But you know, I just I wasn't invested highly enough in this movie to wait to the end of the credits. But uh, it is what it is. It's, it's one of these franchises that's going to be rebooted <laughs> Time and time again, like we finally, uh, just a couple of years back, got uh, Halloween Ends, which ended off the, the story of Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. But, you know, it'll not be a kick in the ass down the road to somebody else. It's like, okay, uh, let's get the the rights to the Halloween franchise and we'll have an hour go at it. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's it's, it's cheesy goodness. Uh, you know, you, you don't go to these, watch these movies looking for friggin' Shakespeare. You're, you're going to see a bit of a horror, you know, this madman run about me and they've taken people out. So any of the other info that I've got on here, um, after the release of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, uh, the, the 2009 sequel to the 2007 remake of the original. Two consecutive follow-ups went into the development from former rights holder Dimension Films, respectively, but neither came to fruition. As a result, the studio lost the rights to the intellectual property, which later, which were later obtained by Bloomhouse Productions and John Carpenter's involvement. Now, I haven't, you know, Bloomhouse, I have to say now, I like their style and movies. And this one here had a good few high points on it. Uh, but I think it was a bit of a safety play as well, just in the way that they kind of handled it. So you get that in a lot of these reboots and remakes and whatnot. You know, it's just... Uh, a recognised franchise and you've got somebody else behind the 
at the helm of the project and they kind of want to, you know, that first one was like, we want to do something slightly different, but we don't want to stray too far from the formula. But, uh, yeah, I, as I say, didn't find myself highly, highly invested in this film, but, you know, again, it is what it is. Um, Carpenter, who disagreed with the, the remake portrayal, of lead killer Michael Myers planting, helping the studio make, well, I guess that's uh, referring to the Rob Zombie Halloween. Uh, yeah, uh, Carpenter uh, disagreed with the portrayal of Michael Myers uh, planting, helping the studio to make the next Halloween film and the what he believed to be more terrifying than the preceding sequels. Filmmakers David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, who were already fans, proposed their vision to Blumhouse and Carpenter. It was accepted and developed into uh, a sequel to the original. Uh, Halloween was filmed in January to February 2018 in Charleston, South Carolina. For some reason, Carolina sounded completely wrong whenever I was first saying it there. Um, reshoots took place in June, and the film premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival on September 8th, 2018. Freeatically released North America on October 19th, 2018. Uh, the film received generally positive reviews from critics and grossed over $259 million worldwide, which is friggin' class. Um, it is the highest grossing slasher film, and on adjusted dollars, breaking a record that Scream had previously set in 1996 as well, setting several other box office records. The film was followed by two sequels, Halloween Kills, and Halloween ends, uh, 2021 and 2022. So, uh, yeah, that's um, you know I've said it time and time again on this podcast, whether it be uh, Halloween here, or the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, or the Friday the Thirteenth movies. These are cash cows. You know, no matter how cheesy and bad a lot of them get. People still want to go and see them because they just want to see what this character is doing this time. Um, but for me, uh, enjoyable enough. Didn't keep me 100% glued to the screen. Uh, I'd failed the social media test a couple of times. Uh, you know, if a film or a TV show can keep me from scrolling on the phone, that's a hit with me. So even if I even slightly get distracted by social media while I'm watching a movie you know it's automatically ugh, for me but uh, you know as I say love the Bloomhouse style had its high moments uh, it was good to see uh, Jimmy Lee Curtis back playing this character again with a bit, bit more of a badass attitude to her which she was sorely lacking in the other movies I know there's one or two of the sequels where she turned up again and had more of a an aggressive approach uh, towards Michael. Uh, Halloween H20, or H20, whatever you want to call it, um, was one of them. But uh, it was good to see her in this one finally taking that front seat in the fight with him. So I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. If you did enjoy it, Please let me know uh, if you want it to be a little bit more detailed. You know, don't be afraid to tell me. It's like you know, you're doing good there for a moment or two, but you lost your way and your notes, as per usual, and it made no sense for about three minutes. So don't be afraid to tell me that there. Um, yes, if you're listening to this on your podcast platform of choice, rate and review, follow the show, and whatnot. And if you happen to be listening to it on YouTube, it goes out there as well. Audio, just with a, just with the the background as the, the project art. Uh, again, let me know what you, your thoughts are about it. So, until the next episode, guys. Whatever you're doing, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all then.
This has been a production of Coins Age Media. Thank you so much for listening.